What's going on, Fortnite fans? My name's Luke the Notable. And in this video, we're gonna be dropping into Leaky Lake 100 times. And we're starting right now, at least with a history lesson. What you're seeing right now is footage from before Leaky Lake ever existed. This is what players dropped into on the last day of the Fortnite Mares event. Every player that dropped in at this time saw this cutscene with their own character. You touch a butterfly or, or something, I don't know, it, it was weird. But at the end, you dropped in right over the new location, Leaky Lake. And as you can imagine, it was quite busy. And I didn't make it. We aren't gonna count that game. So this is game number one. Leaky Lake is essentially a big crater with tons of chests all throughout it. And in game number one, I dropped directly onto a chest. I was able to kill this default, who didn't know any better. And I learned pretty early in game number one that staying inside the pit too long will almost always end in your death. While Leaky Lake has tons of chests, it has very little cover in materials, which makes it pretty easy to get kills on players running in the open. So while there is a ton of loot in Leaky Lake, it sometimes can be a very risky drop. Before game two, I went into the playground mode to learn the locations of chest spawns, the flow of the map, that sort of thing. But when I dropped in in the real game too, it was still insanely hot. Mostly because it was a new location. However, while I didn't know it at the time, I was actually playing Leaky Lake completely incorrectly. Notice how in game three, I drop in, get some loot and some kills, but then pretty soon after, die. That's because Leaky Lake is an absolute death trap. Don't go there. At least not right away. Don't worry. Throughout this video, we'll go over the best strategies for Leaky Lake. But at this time, I didn't know him either. So yeah, I died pretty quickly in game six, seven, and and eight. But game nine, G game nine, I figured it out. I got this now. I think the biggest problem with Leaky Lake is there's no materials inside of the actual pit. Okay, I won't I won't say nothing. There, there are some, but very scarce materials. So I dropped outside of Leaky Lake, just on the edge, farmed materials and loot. For the most part, you'll have a massive advantage over other players that drop directly into Leaky Lake and don't have any materials. You can tell this guy had none. Remember, there is an absolutely massive amount of loot inside of Leaky Lake, but without materials, sometimes it can be hard to survive. So delay your entry and kill the players that come out of Leaky Lake. Then and take their loot. Sitting in the factory just outside Leaky Lake, I was able to kill tons of players that really couldn't fight back because of their low materials. But in the end, this guy fought back. You gotta remember that when dropping into Leaky Lake, materials are insanely important. Getting just two or three hundred wood means you'll outmaterial anyone dropping directly into the pit. This plateau I'm on right now is a great place to come and get wood. You'll easily get at least 400 if you knock down all the trees. Just having that tiny bit of material allowed me to build ramps and get the edge on my opponents that didn't have any. And in most of my games, getting mats early allows me to get a lot of kills. Sure, you're not directly looting Leaky Lake, but you're killing the people that did. Same thing. Game 10, my loot wasn't perfect, but it was enough. And sometimes in Fortnite, that's all you need. Game 10 was the farthest I had come yet while dropping Leaky Lake. With three people left in the final circle, I was ruthlessly attacked by this Calamity, who I almost killed, but yeah, she almost got me too. And while running away with my glider, somehow I was sniped. What? Game 11, my eyes were dazzled by the juicy loot. The center of Leaky Lake had three chests. And while I definitely don't recommend going into Leaky Lake before you have a good amount of materials, sometimes, yeah, you just, you gotta go for it. But again, remember, Leaky is a death trap in the pit. In this game, I was attacked and luckily had a rift to go to get out of there. Hey, it ended up working out. I traveled over to the corruption a little bit north of Leaky Lake and got three chests. My guns were incredible, but it was one of those games where I just couldn't seem to find any healing items. Who knows, maybe this toxic trooper skin is actually cursed. You gotta remember in these early games, I'm more testing the waters. No, no pun intended. I'm dropping different places to see what might be the best strategy. Ultimately, the idea is to learn the location like the back of my hand. That's why I drop here a hundred times. And in game 13, I found a pretty nice drop. If you come to this little plateau just to the north of Leaky Lake, sometimes you can find a chest and some trees. It was a little contested this time, but I handled it. Using my superior materials, I was able to leave Leaky Lake with two kills and some pretty nice loot. Lazy Links is a short walk north of Leaky Lake, especially if you use the corruptions. And I got a pretty easy kill there. Didn't run into anyone else until the final circle. I'm pretty good at staying elusive and shooting men in the back. I was able to survive all the way to a 1v1 in the final circle. As you can tell, it was getting pretty intense. I honestly didn't know this one was gonna be over so quickly. I thought the other player had way more fight left in him. Game 14, I dropped directly onto this pinata, which normally is very lucky, but it didn't give me any guns, which is very important. And despite my huge amount of materials, I, I wasn't able to make it. By game 15, I had pretty much completely stopped myself from dropping into the middle of Leaky Lake. I'm almost always dropping on the periphery by this time. Even just moving around Leaky Lake is so much better when you have some materials. And dropping right in, you're not gonna have those. This game was pretty quiet, but the final circle ended up being in Lazy Links, which I'm not a fan of. It's just too open. And in open locations, Glider Redeploy made it very hard to stay stealthy. Somehow I 
managed. Watching this game hurts me a lot. If you notice my materials, I have almost 2,000, but I didn't build, then died. Game 16, I forgot to hit the record button before starting, and I ended up winning the game. So all I have is this replay footage. Still counts. That's okay, I ended up getting the win in game 17 as well. Yeah, I know that was quick. I got a lot more wins where that came from. Game 18, I wasn't able to kill anyone in Leaky, so my loot was leaving a lot to be desired. I made it as far south as Paradise, but was shot down from the sky. Do not, I repeat, do not heal in the open of Leaky Lake. I'll kill you. Again, once I got out of Leaky, it was a pretty quiet game. I bushed up for most of it. Seemed like right at the end, everyone wanted a piece of me. Too bad, they were trash. And in the end, even with Glider Redeploy, this player fell just a little too far. Game 20, caught another guy healing in the open. 10 out of 10, the best way to get killed in Leaky Lake. I boogie bombed a technique hiding under this ramp. It should have been a very easy kill, but I didn't have a shotgun. And uh, yeah, he did. Game 21 was played in the Blitz mode. These matches always lasted under 15 minutes and it was pretty fun. However, Epic Games took it out pretty quickly, so I don't have much footage of it. It was still very fun. Game 22, I got one kill in Leaky. I shot him in the back. It required tons of skill. I made it down to Tomato Town and fought a guy with more mats. He killed me. Game 23 was the first time I dropped into Frank. He became one of my favorite drops in Leaky Lake. Inside, there's a fair amount of ground loot, trees out front, and a garage with a chest. It's then a pretty quick drop to other locations that have loot and chests. And even without glider redeploy, getting mats in Frank allows you to move around pretty quickly. I had just came from Frank, so I figured I was safe, but someone else was there. I don't know why. I ended up getting shot from three separate directions, then died. Game 24, I dropped Frank again and did an awesome job of coming in at the end and getting all the loot in Leaky. But I was injured from that fight, which allowed a dire to kill me. Again, you want to make sure to be the last one in Leaky so this doesn't happen to you. Game 25 is missing apparently. It cuts out. I don't know why. Game 26, I was really starting to get the timing down for my kills in Leaky Lake. If you notice the timer on my screen, I like to be in and out of Leaky Lake by the time the first storm starts to move. In my experience, stay any longer than that and there's a high chance that you might get killed. Just look at Leaky on the screen. It is a bowl, a bowl of death. If you're in the center of Leaky and anyone attacks you on the rim, they always will have the high ground. And even with materials, sometimes it can be very hard to fight when coming out of Leaky Lake. But just because you're shooting from the rim doesn't mean you're invincible. Here's a technique for pretty safe materials if the storm's kind of small. Sometimes it can be hard to stay out in the open and farm trees or other things, but if you find a house, one thing you can do is knock out all of the interior walls. On the exterior walls, you're gonna wanna make sure to knock them all the way down to 50. That way, you still have a wall blocking you from the outside so no one can see you, but you still get materials. From gutting this one house, I was able to safely get almost 1,000 materials. And for me, that's pretty much all I need to win a game. I've been practicing my turtling strats in the final circle. If it's kind of hectic like this one was, it's a great way to stay alive. I was able to easily stay alive, avoid damage, and get the best position. And with good position, high health, and some really awesome guns, I won the game easily. Then default danced on his corpse. Game 27, you can tell I'm starting to get really good at Leaky Lake early game. I kind of have it down to a science. Dropping Leaky, it's pretty easy for me to make it to the end game. But in this particular game, the circle was very far south, and I got caught up in some heat. Game 28 started a little rough. This wild card got me down to two bullets, and I used both of them to kill him. I didn't end up conquering Leaky Lake. I decided to move north and instead. Oh, and the balloons? Awesome. Love them so much. I made it all the way to the bunker in Wailing Woods. This is a great place to come for some late game metal. There's also a rift that always spawns here. This strategy was made for the scoundrel. I sit inside the bunker farming the walls and floors for metal and stone. Then when the time comes, I take the rift to safety. Using this strategy, I had so many more strong mats in the final circle. That allowed me to move very freely, not take a lot of damage, and again, win the game. Game 29, I left Leaky without any kills. It was just too hot to go in and I didn't want to wait around. It was a pretty quiet game until I was horribly startled, jumped out of my fort, then died. I'd rather just forget game 30. And 31 only shows the guy that killed me. Game 32, I played the center of the lake exceptionally well and got all the loot. I even killed this guy with a single whiff of my stink grenade. If you go to the eastern part of Leaky Lake, you'll find an RV that sometimes can spawn a quad crasher. Once you've got all the loot from Leaky, the quad crasher can be a quick getaway. The purple ghost gems are also really nice ways to travel around the map, but make sure only to use under adult supervision. Game 33 made me incredibly upset, so let's just skip to the end. 1v1, final circle. I am literally on one health. The only other guy in the match is a default. He drops right in front of me. I hit him with a shotgun and don't get the kill. No. Epic, I, I am suing you. Game 34, disconnected. It wasn't good anyway. Game 35, another pretty easy transition to the late game. Slaughtering some noobs. Again, use my superior mats to turtle up hard in the new circle, which kept my health up. Hey, just because I'm doing some camping doesn't mean I don't have those skills to get some kills. I love having tons of materials in the final circle. From up here, all the little noobs just look like ants. 
I did not win that one. Game 37, kill one was perfectly done to get all the loot. I made it to the end game with decent stuff. And in the final circle, basically as soon as I got my feet down, I was attacked and killed. Game 38, I lost to a guy who had 10 kills. It was bad. Game 39, I played some duos with Jake. He had never gone to Leaky before, so we didn't do well. Game 40 was bad too. Game 41, I got an early rocket launcher, which really helped with some kills. Didn't help me win the game though. Game 42, I played Leaky perfectly, made my way over to the Wailing Woods bunker and farmed some mats. I mean, look at my loot. I got a decent AR, a shotgun, rocket launcher, launch pad, everything I need to win. So why not buff my mats incessantly and make it to the final circle easily? For massive portions of this game, I played incredibly conservatively, but still won the game with nine kills. How awesome. That was actually my hundredth solo win ever. In game 43, you might miss this first kill if you blink. Not gonna lie, I probably would've died if I didn't hit that. Don't worry, I died later. Game 44, I may or may have not been killed by this default. Game 45, I dropped into squads, no one else came with me, and I died. I put up a hell of a fight though. Game 46, the pit was a little hectic, but I'm almost 50 games in. I'm used to it. Oh, and also I love the heavy AR. It feels like the DMR from Halo. I was in a trapped metal fort on top of a mountain with awesome guns and full health. This guy had just no chance. Game 47, I played some squads and my squad came to Leaky with me. Of course they all died. It was just me, myself, and my minigun. It's all right. I play with the pros now. I'm legit. Streets of Salty taught me well. Game 48, oh, oh no. I was the man in game 49. I had rockets, everything. I was feeling Cocky. I even bludgeoned this llama to death for the video. Toxic Trooper has always been sort of a curse on this channel. I have no idea why. Game 50 was super hot. I killed this guy dropping in only to be killed by another guy behind me. Game 51 was great. I got tons of kills around Leaky Lake in the early game. I was built up in one of my favorite positions. I've won countless games from this mountain to the north of Pleasant Park. The mountain was a little busier than normal, and I have a giant target on my back. I'll spare you the rest of this game. No one wants to watch a man die. In game 52, I had almost everything I needed, even two rocket launchers but no materials. And you guys know how that generally tends to go. Game 53, I got a series of decent snipes in Leaky Lake. Sniping is fairly easy here because most players are on low health. Ironically, I was sniped myself. Game 54, we both had shotguns. Mine must have just been defective. Game 55 started like any other Leaky Lake game. I killed a bunch of people. I made it to the end game, but I was tragically killed by some lucky grenade launcher shots. My luck in dodging those is pretty bad. Game 56, I had to injure myself so I could heal with bandages for a challenge. Eventually, my self destructive behavior caught up with me. Game 57 was going pretty well. Of course, I left Leaky with some nice stuff. I got it down to a 1v1 in the final circle with this dire. My sawed off didn't do that much damage, and I got some damage myself, so I was in trouble. I popped my rift to go to get some distance, but in the open fields of Salty Springs, I still died. In game 58, I heard a ghost lurking around me. I acted natural until he got close enough for me to shoot him with my shotgun. He tried to get away, but didn't. Wasn't a hard game. I had about a billion mats in the final circle, and with Glider Redeploy, I could build up this high with almost no consequences. A lot of times the other players wouldn't even see me. Easy wins. Game 59, I stayed in Leaky Lake far too long. Game 60, there were two John Wicks in Leaky Lake. We all knew what was going to happen. I made it as far south as Fatal Fields to get some materials, but found a default there that hadn't been killed. The storm went back up north into Dusty Divot, and I'm a master here. If the circle's shrinking around Dusty Divot, I love to get up above the canopy. Especially if you have a ton of mats, if you're above the canopy, it's really hard to be killed. I knew that Dusty Divot was treacherous enough. It killed the player for me. Game 61, second place, woo! -hoo. In game 62, you could tell that the NFL skins were out. Despite my need to sack some players, I didn't kill anyone in Leaky Lake. Yeah, even until the final circle. In game 63, I was playing some duos with Vayne, and he was downed. It's okay, I saved him very heroically. We made it over to Fatal Fields with just a little bit of style. In the rest of the game, we looked a lot less cool. Game 64, I had some pretty easy kills early game, but got lost in a pretty nasty northern circle. Game 65, I played pretty perfectly. There's the first kill, here is the second low health. Third one was over here, again, pretty low health. Nice shots combining to get the triple kill. Now all I gotta do is fly in, pick up the loot. You know what? What's crazy, this guy's tack did seven damage up close and he still killed me. Game 66 was another hot bus. But by this point, I just embraced death. I got an early rocket kill, but was then killed myself by Defaulty Boy 176 He ended up being his own worst enemy. In game 67, I died. It'll happen to all of us one day. Check this tip out. You know if you drop Frank and you stand on the edge of the roof, you can knock down this tree for some easy materials? Frank's the best. I'm always able to get at least 200 mats and some weapons. If any of your friends complain about getting pounced on with glider redeploy, just show them this clip. 
They're bad. I know I've talked trash about hiding in trees, but in Wailing Woods, it's not a terrible strategy. It is the highest point. I had absolutely everything to win this game. I wasn't worried at all. I used my rockets to scare the other player into hiding into his own fort, even when the storm overtook him. Remember, kids, fear is your greatest weapon. Let's see if I can get a win in game 69 for once. I killed everyone in Leaky, taking the loot and the land. Later on, I was attacked by this default. We both had rocket launchers. Yeah, that'll work. Hide in a very small area. Dang, he had some decent loot for a default. I built a sky bridge. I was going straight for victory. I had so many mats I was able to dance around the enemy players. So when it finally came time to win the game, I did it without breaking a sweat. By game 70, I was pretty much dropping on top of Frank every single game. Gives you good mats, good weapons, and a good chance of conquering the entire place. In the motel, I found an aimbot who was pretty checked out. He didn't even realize I was killing him. Not gonna lie, I got a couple lucky kills on guys like this with low health and tons of loot. It was a 1v1 in the final circle, so you knew I was sky bridging. We danced around the corruption for a pretty long time. The other player knew I had rockets, so he was keeping his distance. However, after I blasted him with my shotgun, he hit under me, which let me know he was out of materials. And from here, the win was incredibly easy to set up. Even though it lagged a bit, I got him. But can we get the back to back to back to back? Nope! For game 72, Jake came over and played on my setup. We had excellent communication, which allowed us to do way better in these games. It was two on one, we both had rockets and scars, this was a very easy victory. Absolutely destroyed! Yeah, but in game 73, the situation was flipped. I was alone in the final circle against two guys, and you know how that generally tends to go. Game 74 was a little more fair, in the end it was two solos and a duo. As the circle shrank, we made it down to a 1v1. I had the materials, but not the health. Oh yeah, and did I mention he had rockets? Well, I poked him a little bit before dying. But in game 75, we we were able to get it back together, build up on top of a mountain in the final circle. What are these guys doing fighting us from below the mountain? Don't they know that'll never work? The ancient shack of despair technique does not work against two players. I just kept the trigger held down. I knew eventually he'd die. Game 76 shows a perfect example of why you shouldn't drive the quad crashers through the water. After getting some loot, I pleasantly floated away. I survived. I got caught in a pretty nasty situation. I had to turtle up near Salty Springs. I'm still working on my edit shots, and I'm proud with how much damage I ended up doing. Oh yeah, and then the guy that killed me got killed. Yeah, but then someone killed him too. This fart's just littered with sorrow. If you're wondering why I'm not really showing the early game a lot, it's because the strategy is fairly consistent at this point. I farmed trees, which gave me a massive advantage over the other players in Leaky Link. So it was incredibly easy for me to make it to the end game. But as you probably know, the end game's where the real men hang out. Game 78, 79. 80 was fine, I guess. I, I didn't win. Probably my favorite item to find in any chest in Leaky Lake is the grappler. Now, I know you're seeing it with glider redeploy here, but even without glider redeploy, using a grappler to get around Leaky Lake is awesome. Also, I have been using the tactical shotgun a little bit more, at least throwing it in my loadout sometimes. Much like many of you, I didn't realize that this was now a 1v1 in the final circle, and the only other player in the match was already upon me. That's all right, like the coward I am, I turtled up. You know, it got me some time. I got some heals. Y'all want to die in a blaze? Just heal. It it'll be okay. I I think everyone else in the lobby died pretty quickly because me and this other guy had a 1v1 for a pretty long time. It was very close, the storm was coming, we were both low on materials. But using my tactical shotgun, I was still able to get the victory. Game 82, I was sniped in the back. Not really anything different, uh, it happens a lot. You know, nothing, nothing really, oh, uh. Uh, here's the next game. I don't like it. Game 84, I made it as far as Tilted Towers because I saw this supply drop, but was pretty quickly after incinerated. We'll skip to the end of game 85. It was a 1v1 in the final circle. I took a surprising amount of damage from this man's assault rifle. However, fortunately for me, he was incredibly careless with a one by one he built in the final circle. Also, if I have rockets, I have a chance. Game 86, I played with visualized sound effects turned on. It can be great if you're listening to music or for whatever reason, can't hear the volume of Fortnite. Some people have told me that it helps with build battles as well. But it didn't seem to help me. That's okay, in game 87 I killed a default, which always puts a smile on my face. These games took place after I played with the pros, so I learned a few things. Yeah, I guess the glider dive bomb strat is a little bit dishonorable. But karma got me in the end. Ah, and it was a toxic trooper. Game 88, I put down a dire with one shot. I missed a shot later that ended in my death. Game 89 was going swell until I made it down to Tomato Temple and got wicked. Game 90, I was minding my own business, hunting other sentient beings. Someone shot me in the back! Game 90 there were tons of noobs in Leaky Lake. I killed a lot of them with chemical warfare. 
It's efficient. I'm not gonna lie, this was a tough game. It wasn't like I sat in a bush all day. I actually had to fight some of these guys. I had a lot of fun with this game. Really let loose and tried to go for high kills. And I got a new record. Game 92, I was killed by a default. You can tell I was mad because I backed out insanely quickly. Game 93, I needed to come in at least top 50 for a challenge. Kill 3 was really nice. But while healing, I was attacked. I fumbled with my controller and that ended up killing me. Game 94 was okay. I made it as far as Dusty Divot before being swallowed whole by the system. Game 95 is missing but I placed well enough to get that challenge I needed earlier. For game 96, Mater came over and we played some duos. Mater's the one that draws all the awesome thumbnail art. Check him out on Twitter with a link in the description. Again, having him physically here on my own setup made it a lot easier to communicate. Oh, and also, check out this win. This time, we remembered to dance. Game 97, we dropped in his wick. You knew it was about to happen. To make sure we were extra good, we even turned on streamer mode. I don't know what it is, we just play better when we wear the wick skins. What's crazy about this one is we were killing so fast, so into the game that we didn't even realize we had won. We were both so sweaty we forgot to dance. Game 98, I was matched with his default. We probably should have read the manual before using that rocket launcher. I got some really nice kills. This one I liked a lot. I saw a player sitting in the open with his back to the storm. I took a couple of shots which hit, but his hit much harder. This really should not be happening in game 99. Finally, we're on game 100. One thing that's pretty interesting about this game is it's one of the few times that Leaky Lake was unlooted. That's right, all of the loot was mine. I even ended up getting a llama. I went north and found the motel, which was also unlooted. I said earlier in this video, I've flown to this exact spot north of Pleasant Park and won tons of games. I mean, they can try to kill you, but it's the highest spot for a stretch. Most of the time, no one bothers me, but in this game, I was attacked. Everything was fine. I set up adequate traps. I made it to a 1v1, and the safe circle was getting incredibly small. There was only one more player to kill, and he found me first. You know, at first, I thought Leaky Lake was going to be a huge challenge dropping 100 times, but in the end, it turned out I really enjoyed it. It's become one of my favorite locations, and it's definitely better than Loot Lake. Dropping Leaky Lake, I was able to place higher and get more wins than ever before. And dropping this place 100 times definitely has me itching for a new challenge. So make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay up to date and make sure you don't miss the next 100 drops. But that's it for the video. Thank you all for watching. I want you all to please stay notable and I will see you in the next video.